Oh man, here we go, man. Today in the building, we have Sean Solo Fontino in the building. GTA 5 voice actor. Yes, How sir. You doing? What's good? What's good, big dog? Man, I feel good. You know, man, this is one of the most requested interviews of all time, you know, with my brand. Uh, and it feels like, man, you've been talking for months trying to get this done. And yeah. we're finally here. Yeah, we here, dog. See, so, you know, I kept my word. You kept your word. So that's what we do. For sure, man. I appreciate it. Now, man, you are a part of the second most sold game of all time. 160 million copies sold, $10 billion in revenue made, man. Um, you know, before we get to the game, I want to get a rundown on, you know, you grew up in, in Watts, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take us through that 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 growing up, you know, as a kid, as a teen and, and, and stuff of that nature. Yeah, it's a good thing you asked that, man. You know, I can um I grew up in the in Watts in the projects. And um, you know, I uh to me, my childhood was cool until I was about like eight or nine. And then I started being abused, like re getting my ass whooped all the time, getting physically hurt from my um my uh, stepfather, you know what I'm saying, which was my mom's um husband. And, um, you know, he was he was whooping my ass a little too much. You feel what I'm getting at? So it, it forced me to run away and go live with my grandmother. And a lot of people know about that. When you go with your grandmother, it's like, you know, she still lived right. in Watts, too. So um, he ended up passing from um, an overdose and shit. And um, then after that, you know what I'm saying? I kind of went back and tried to live with my mother again, but it didn't work. So I ended up living with my grandmother because my mother, she had me when she was 15. So. It was like it was a brother sister kind of relationship, you know what I'm saying? And um, I grew up in the city of Watts, man, and you know I joined the gangs. Of course, you know every damn near all of us do that because that's all we got. You feel what I'm saying? When right. you're in the hood, the gangs are pretty much, you know, they call them gangs, but it's it's family members, it's homies. You know what I'm saying? That that that's what it is with us. But the the outside world and the people that don't understand that shit, they make it more than what it what it was. Now it's crazy. Now it's a difference from when I was gang banging. You know what I mean? Right. We did a lot of this shit. We did very little of this, but we did it. So um, exactly. You know, I grew up. I I went to I went to school. I Man, I dropped out in the tenth grade. I only got like a ninth grade, tenth grade education. You know, been through pure hell. Um, I've been through a lot, man. Coming up, man. I mean, people wouldn't even. Matter of fact, even speaking on that, let me show you something real quick. The reason, the reason I don't want to say say too much, but I only say it for you. But I got to get you a copy too, bro. Right. You know the 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 book, man. It, it's it's finna hit, man. Everything is in there, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I got All to get right. you a copy of it, bro. It's the it's That's the real hard. deal, man. It's 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 ready to rock and roll. So the whole right. story is up in here, man. With my game banging. Um, my drug dealing, you know, I tapped into that at a very, very young age, bro. You know, um, the book tell a little bit about it. You know, I could talk about the drug dealing because it was so long ago. It was 30 years ago. You feel me? Right. And, um, you know, I was 13, 14, 15 with my hands in there really kind of tough. You know, I was one of the youngest dudes in the city of Los Angeles, man, that was really touching on it in a major way, dog. You feel right. what I'm saying? I'm talking about. By the time I was 18, bro, I bought my mama her first house. Put it like that. You feel me? So amazing. I, I was I was in the streets and I had no other way. You know, you know, I I, I wanted to work, but I, my influences growing up was my uncles, my grandfather, my homies, and all of them were fucking thugs. You feel me? Because I never knew my real father. My real father was a penitentiary dude that been in the pen all his life, and he right. he was part of the BGF. He was a top hitter in the BGF. So. You know, a lot of people say that's where I get my temperament from, you know, because my dad was crazy as hell. I never met him. But um, that's that's my growing up, bro. Now, speaking of that, and I, I know you're coming out with a book. I don't want to, you know, spoil anything. You you witnessed your dad at 12. Yeah. Passing away. I witnessed him at the age of nine. Ten. At nine. Nine to ten. Passing away of an overdose of, of heroin, man. And, um... You know, now the older I get, I see why he was um kind of physical with me because I found out a lot of things that that you know, when you get older, you can rewind back on things cuz I was always wondering through my life why he always whooped on my ass. I had a I had a younger brother and I had a sister which was his daughter through from my mother. I wasn't his kid, nor was my brother. You know, my mom had 
three kids by three different guys. So she was running the streets. She was young. And um, the older I get and knowing about heroin use and the temperament you have from it. And also I found out that my father and him used to have issues back in the day. So he was taking it out on me. He didn't he didn't. Wow. I don't know if he didn't like me, but he treated me like a son sometime. You know, you're going to read it in the book, man, that he he wasn't a super monster, but he was a monster enough to where he was beating the shit out of me. And I didn't it wasn't cool with me. Like you can right. see, you can see right here. I'm gonna show you right here, man. In in my in my comic book, it got him on the floor overdosing, got me. So I'm gonna get you all of this, man. I got everything coming, and Rockstar is helping me push all this, so you know where that's gonna go. They doing, yeah. they gonna, they gonna, you know, help me with 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 making this a big, big, big issue, man. So I definitely right. got to get you everything. But yeah, man, he, I was eight, nine year old. And he was abusing me, whooping my ass and shit. So, yeah. Now, didn't you witness your actual father? It was like you were outside and an accident happened or something like that. Or he was uh my my actual father. It was a it was a church's chicken around the corner that I used to be cleaning the parking lot when I was young. I was probably about 12, 13 at the time. And I witnessed a high speed chase and he ended up getting killed. He, he died. But I didn't know that was my pops, you know, until my mom said we got to go to the because, you know, back then when shit happened, you try to get closest to the scene as you can, because it was actually like like walking distance from where I was in the parking lot. And mm -hmm. I walked down there and I saw this dude laying out with blood coming out his head, out his nose, his mouth. And, you know, I'm a kid, you know, and um from. I can't say this to you, bro. From all the ass whoopings that my stepfather was putting on me, abusing me the way he was, he taught me where he embedded in me um, no conscience. Like, I, I had no feeling. And that's why the first chapter in my book is called Numb. Because I was numb to everything after that, bro. So it kind of fucked my life up to where I didn't give a fuck about shooting a motherfucker. I didn't give a fuck a motherfucker pull a pistol out on me. You just going to have to do what you got to do. I'm not finna act all spooked out because I got numb to that shit because he, he whooped that into me. So... Right. When I saw my my real dad laying out there, I didn't know who this dude was. You feel what I'm saying? So it was crazy that my mom came like a day or two after and said, we got to go somewhere. She took me to the hospital. And it was the same man laying in the hospital bed. He was real buff and real big and bald headed. And he was laying in there on the rest um, on the machines. All I kept yeah. saying was his chest get big, go down. And she was like, this is your real father. And I was like, what the fuck? I just seen this dude, you know? Crazy. And I was still numb, though. Remember that? I didn't drop a tear. Everybody was crying. I didn't know him. So it was like, fuck, I'm going to cry for. I don't know this dude. You know what I mean? But right. I would have loved to have knew my pops like that. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I didn't never have in my life. Straight up. Now, you were making money. At a young age. I mean, you yeah. told stories of you going to school with forty, fifty thousand dollars in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. That's um, accurate? Sometimes that that might be exaggerated. You know how we have fun with this shit, but <laughs> some racks in my pocket, four thousand, five thousand, okay. you know, a couple thousand sometimes. Sometimes nothing. You know, sometimes you just want to show off. You know, back when we went to school, it was a it was a different feel when I went to high school and junior high school, man. You know, the money really wasn't it really wasn't nothing because everybody could make the money, bro. I'm talking about back in them days in the crack era when it really, really hit hard. You know, Freeway Rick running around, you know, and he was like one of my idols. And, you know, I knew him and it, money was easy to get, man. You can go count somebody money and make you 15000 in one day. You count two, three million dollars to your to the to the to the green was leaking off on your hands, bro. See, money was different back then. You used to count money and the green be coming off on your hand. So we right. we as kids, man, that's how we started out. We was counting these OGs money and they was giving us a couple of thousand, you know, here. And then you losing count when you get to a million six and you losing count. You're like, what the fuck? You got to start all over again. Start all the way over. Fives and tens and ones and shit. So you drop out of school early. And at this time, you're making money. Um, and you bought your mom a house at 17, 18? It was around 18. 18, yeah, somewhere close to there, 18, 19, you know. Um, I moved my mom, you know, we we rekindled our relationship when I got about 15, 16. And sad to say, you know, uh, I brought 
I brought pure hell to her, man. You know, I brought trouble because motherfuckers was kicking in doors, trying to come get me and, you know, shootouts and shit at the house. The gang member, you know, I was from a gang, I was from a crip set and they was coming through there, man. And they was shooting the house up, shooting at me, all kind of shit, man. And um, I wanted to get her up out of there, you know what I'm saying? So the best thing was I moved her out and I moved her into a, a, a nice apartment at first in a better area, the west side of the area. I'm from the east side. And we stayed there for a few years. And the trouble found me there, you know? And um, after that, I just said, it's time, you know, go find you a house. And she went and found her a house. I was actually, when she found a house, I was actually in L London. I was in London because I was I was part of a rap group back then that was real big. You know, y'all probably don't know in L.A. It was uh, Cam, Solo, The Lynch Mob, Ice Cube. Them was all my folks and shit. So right. I was in London when she actually got the house. So, you know, she knew where to go get the bread at to take care of everything. So at 17, 18, you're a full time hustler then. I'm still it, dibbling and dabbling and still trying to get into the music at the same time. You know, that's that's I say this a lot back in when I was 18. 19, every drug dealer or criminal ambition was to get into the music business. You yeah. know, we all wanted to be a rapper or be something because we had the money. So we just like, shit, what else else? You know, you get bored with making money and shit. So it's like, I want to rap shit because Cube and them, Easy, all them out here getting that bread, having fun. So shit, we try to get into the music business. And it's the same thing with the NBA shit. All the NBA players want to get into the rap mm -hmm. business because yep. they get yeah, they get bored with yep. all that fucking money and basketball. So they start trying to want to rap. And then the 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 entertainment motherfuckers, the real entertainment, they want to come to the hood. So you got a lot of rappers yeah. that's not really from no hood, but they come to the hood and they join any hood. They just join something, you know? So that's where it got the flip side to the coin. You know, sometimes you had a cool ass rapper dude from a certain neighborhood. He wasn't from the hood, but he lived in the neighborhood and he ended up blowing up and being somebody. Now he's claiming that hood, you know, so. Yeah, I see a lot of that today. Oh, 90% <laughs> of it, bro. So, you know, I don't get into it, but that's that's if that's what they doing, then that's what they doing. You feel me? Is that for, do you feel like that's for prote for protection while they're in L.A.? Um, I, 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 would, I would say some of it is protection, you know, but some of it is. You know, us as black and brown folks, man, we just want to be part of some shit sometimes. We just want to feel you know, like a family, because a lot of us didn't have a family family growing up. You know, it was some dysfunctional in our family somewhere, somehow. I don't know where it was, but it was dysfunction. But um, definitely we joined for I mean, not me, but them kind of dudes, they joined for a little protection. But also they joined because they just want to have they want to feel like somebody. And then they go right. and then they go a little too far with it. You know, you got some, I don't want to say no names, but there's some rappers that joined and hanged around people and now they going a little too far with it. You feel what I'm saying? Definitely. Now you've been a part of two kidnappings. Two. Yeah. Hell yeah. It, now is that you physically being kidnapped? Or nah, that I never got that? hell nah shit. They're gonna have to gun me down, homie. I'm for real shit. I, you ain't taking me nowhere and torture me. You, we gonna handle our business right on the spot. And ain't trying to say mm. like I'm tough like that, but I know what come from being taken and took somewhere, bro. It's torture. So let's just deal with this on the spot, man. Um, yeah, my um, my son, his mom got kidnapped and, you know, I got the phone call. You know, you want to spend some money, get your girl back. How much money was that? Uh, I think it was like, it was a hundred bands. It was something like a hundred, 120 bands or some shit like that. Shit. And then my, 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 my current wife, that I've been with for she married now 25 years. She got kidnapped. So I went through it twice. Shit. Only. But the first one, after after they found out, you know, the affiliations and whatnot and who was and what was gonna become of this shit afterwards, because of, you know, who who that I, that people on my side, my family was, we was really, it was gonna be a bad situation. They let her go. They just like, hey, don't look at the, the dudes who, who had her. Like, don't look at me. I won't look at you. Get in the car. You look out that way. I'm going to look this way and just let her get out the car and leave. My wife's situation, it was a different situation. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a fucked up situation. You feel what I'm getting at? I mean, you know, you get sick-minded motherfuckers. You know, they want to try to rape and touch and do things and shit. Yeah. 
And um, thank God it didn't get to that, but it was it was it was getting to that. And somehow somebody else come in and stop the, the shit from going down. Right. And that's how she was able to slip out. They started yeah. getting into it, scrapping and all that type. So she slipped out that kind of way and got away and called me and I ended up getting her back and stuff. So. Yeah, it was, what were you um, doing? What, were you terrorizing the city or what? Like, nah, why, bro, I, I, I wasn't terrorizing. I wasn't no. I wasn't no. I, I mean, I, I was doing my fair share of if we had a problem. I never was a person that wanted to fuck with an innocent person or anything. I was the. I was the dude looking for the bullies. I wanted to deal with the motherfuckers that thought they were super tough. Like, if I had a homeboy talking about man, we gonna go in here, we gonna rob this place, and we gonna shoot this, and we gonna hurt these old people and these innocent people. Bro, you fuck around, get yourself rocking in your motherfucking grave because that's just not what I was about. So I wasn't terrorizing nothing. I was just getting my money. So, you know, at that era in the in the mid 80s, 90s, bro, if you had the bag, you was the target because they had a crew of motherfuckers that was just going around kidnapping in L.A. real bad. I'm talking about, dude, I'm talking about everybody that had money had some form of experience with be either being kidnapped or someone being kidnapped. And a lot of people, they didn't make it back or they people didn't make it back. It was death, you know, but I'm thankful that I got back, you know, my son, mom and my wife. I'm very thankful for that. But yeah, that it come with that territory, man. So. Right. Now you survived being shot five times. One, once in the head, right? It, it where the bullet hit the ground and and came up off the ground because the dude was shooting at me on the ground and it it went through. It just grazed the skin. It wasn't in the head, but right. Here, okay. The bullet wound here. It's one here, and that's from doing like this when the guy stood over me and shit. He hit my arms, but in the stomach twice. Yeah. So you didn't you didn't see it all. Uh, I, 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 I know it all. I've seen enough and I experienced a lot. Put it that way. Like I yeah. tell people, I know what it feel like to be on both sides of the gun. I know what it feel like to be rich and I know what it feel like to be poor, you know? So it's a, it's, a, it, it comes with the life I was living. You know, I wish I came up, I wish I had uncles and I wish I had a real father that can, that taught me something other than fucking letting me get to the streets, you know? A, 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 a legal gig to where, you know, a nigga can really eat and provide for his family and stay out the bullshit. By the grace of God, I survived, you know. I survived, bro. I've been through some shit, man. I'm talking about I've been in standing room, small as like a 10 by 10 and there's five or six dudes in there, homie. And the bullets start ringing at everybody. Everybody popping off. Even if you feel what I'm getting at, so... I, I, it's crazy, man. You know, but I, I lived it, man. I I've I been through it, so I I know it, I know what both sides of it feel like. And you lost a lot of friends to the streets. Yeah, a lot of friends to the streets with death. Um, a lot to jail. A lot, a lot to jail because you gotta remember when I was coming up, a lot of us was getting a lot of money, and they was letting us do that, and then they was targeting us and locking us up and giving us life. So I just now got at least eight homies from my neighborhood that was like multimillionaires getting a lot of money with that, you know, that H and that and that white girl. Um, they just now coming home and they all coming home at the same time, at least seven to eight of them. And they all like 28, 28 years, 29, 26, 27. And they walked it off, man. And they all coming home. It's like that jail preserver motherfucker for something because they all still look young. And athletic, it's some weird shit about jail, man. I don't know what it is about that food up in there, but it <laughs> preserved them niggas, man. <laughs> yeah. Now you're in the movie The Wash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with Snoop, I think Dre's in there too, right? Yeah, Snoop. Snoop and Dre was the uh, the the lead characters, the lead actors. A lot of different things going on in your life. How do you get that that role in the movie? DJ Pooh, man. I don't know if you know DJ Pooh. Yeah, yeah. DJ Pooh, I owe, I, I, I say this in every interview, man. I have to give him his flowers in every interview, man. I love that brother, man. He's my brother. I talk to him almost every other day or every day. Um, I owe everything in the, in, the, in the industry business and entertainment to him. I owe the movies, this video game, 
and music to him, man. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have my hands in any of this because when he first cast me in a role, you know, we were real good friends. We used to be in his, he had a studio where everybody recorded out of, from Snoop to Dre, to Eminem, everybody. And I used to be up there every day just pushing and pushing with him and moving the line in the studio. And, you know, when my, when my um, boy uh, Cam and we used to be all writing music together and doing our thing, um, he did his first movie called um, uh, Three Strikes. Well, his first movie that he had something to do with that he co-wrote with Ice Cube was Friday. That's what he co-wrote. He wrote that with Fri He wrote that with Cube. Friday. That was the first movie. But his actual first movie was called Three Strikes with Faison, yep. Rob, uh, Rob, uh, Robert, um, I want to say Robert Hook, uh, his last name Hook. I, Man, I, I, my, my mind's somewhere else right now. I think DeAndre from, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. DeAndre Bonds, yeah. Yeah. I played a, a prison inmate named Big Mo. And, you know, I was pressing, you know, uh, Robert Hook's the lead actor and shit. That was the first one. Then when he did The Wash, which was his second one, he casted me in there. And I was just around. I'm not an actor or nothing. But it's just ironic. He always give me roles that I live. So it's like, hey, Solo, we just want you to be fucking you. You feel me? Yeah. So when yeah. I was I was in The Wash, a lot of people didn't know it because I was bigger. I was chunky, yeah. man. I was yeah, 260. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? I was a kidnapper. And uh, people remember, you know, and he say, 50 Cent, man, quit saying my name on the, fo on the phone, you know, <laughs> shit like that. And 50 Cent, dog, that's what this shit all about, two punk ass quarters. You know, uh, we stole the scene. We just stole it. And now it made us seem like we were the lead actors because everybody gravitated to our two retarded asses, you know, his DJ Pooh goofy ass and my Siri ass, you know. So um, he casted me in there and it ended up being a classic. And that was I was just thankful for that, bro. And then um, he casted me. Well, after that, he casted me in to come and read some, do some things with San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I did a lot of voices on there. My cousin Melee actually starred in it. He was CJ. Yeah. So it's yeah. crazy that you know he starred in there, and I got Franklin. It's, it's weird. You know, that this this shit you couldn't make up. You couldn't dream of. You feel what I'm getting at? And then after he cast me in that, I ended up being in a movie called, uh, he did another movie called The Grow House with Lil mm -hmm. Duvall, yep. D. Ray Davis. And I was in there. Yeah. I was uh, Faison's like homie, his big homie. He was in the wheelchair. Um, then after that, man, you know, I, I mean, no, before that, ironically that, uh, he called me one day to come. He said, man, I need you to come read for this video game. Now, I was the vice president of a big, big motorcycle club out here, Harley Davidson Club. And I had one of the fastest bikes in the city, one of the cleanest bikes uh, called the Choppers. And um, I was like, man, Pooh, man, I, ain't, I don't want to read for no motherfucking uh, video game, man. He was like, nigga, I'm telling you, you want to come for this. I was like, man, I don't want to fuck that shit. So I told him, I'm going to go finish riding my bike. So I'm riding on my bike. I get to the gas station. I, my phone just still ringing. It's him again. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what up, Pooh? He's like, man, just come through. I want you to meet these people. So I come through. I say, all right, I'm going to come through, man. I come through there. And, you know, I'm showing off on my bike. Music loud as a motherfucker. I got 16 speakers on the bike, clowning, having fun. You know, I got a full face helmet on. You can't even see my face because the tennis shield. So they don't know who I am coming up the street on Woolies and all that shit that, um, I park and I get off and this pool like see me like solo nigga come on this is what I'm telling y'all about now when I got off the bike it was like twenty young dudes reading for this I I, I ain't gonna say a lot of names but it was some known actors some re wow. real known rappers like I was like rappers I and actors for this shit yeah a lot of rappers real and known. actors yeah yeah so I'm like he just walked me past him because I told him I had to go he was like, I'm gonna get you right in just come. So I get in the office and it's some set up like where camera here and they give you some lines and they read to you from back there and you just read back. You read it back to them. So I, I said, hold on, let me read this shit first. And it was some British dudes and I guess they was from Rockstar Game. I seen what they wanted to say. I set the motherfucker down and I just said it in my own way. You know, I, I went off the script. And they asked me, they played their role of the other guy. And the name I was playing, um, my character name was Deshaun, Deshaun, Deshaun. 
And the name of the game was called Paradise. See, they never said Grand Theft Auto. They said Paradise because Rockstar moved in secrecy. So, uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil where you going with the interview. So I don't know if you want me to continue because it leads into Grand Theft Auto. Well, well, yeah. OK, well, let's go back to to the wash. Uh, did you have to do auditions for that or nah. it was just because you knew DJ Pooh? It's, 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 it's sometime I tell people in life, and this is a major, 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 major truth and facts, 100 percent. It's not what you know, it's who you know. You feel what I'm getting at? You can have a, all the degrees in the world and walk in a building that you know you got more knowledge and everything than anybody in this building. It's still who you know to get in. That's the world we live in now. It's who you know. You feel what I'm saying? Not what you know. You can have all degree. I know people with major degrees and they working in movie theaters and they, they waiting on people at tables, you know, and it's sad because they went to college four years, maybe five, six, seven years, got these degrees and they come back to society and they got to go still wait on tables. So that's that's enough to, to ruin a person's spirit, to ruin who they are. Not only are they in debt, but now they working to pay that debt. And still have no money left. So they working paycheck to paycheck. They taking Peter to rob Paul and Paul to rob Peter. So it's, it's fucked up. It's a fucked up world, man. But yeah, I got into the watch because DJ Pooh knew me. He casted me. You know, I walked in the casting room and I just saw my picture on the wall, you know, face. That's and I saw him hard. slim. So I was like, oh, shit, my boy looking out, you know. Yeah. And... We shot. We got down, man. We did our thing. And it was it was crazy working around all them stars, man. You got to remember, bro, it was it was not just Snoop and Dre. It was Eminem, Exhibit, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Alex Thomas, all these Cheech and Chung, all these people, man. It was a lot of people, bro. A lot. And I was working around all them people. So can you reveal how much you got paid for that? Because I know as you being a newcomer, sometimes you may get two grand or no 20. back back then. Yeah, I can talk about that. Back then, I who looked out for me. I, I made, I made some, I made some cool money for that little shit. I think it was about like twenty bands or some shit. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. He looked. Cause out. I see people on Friday say so they didn't even get, they didn't even get twenty bands for Friday. Nah, for they didn't. You know, um, that was years after the watch. I mean, before the watch. But um, who looked out? He looked out. You gotta remember, like I keep telling you. Um, this is not just an associate. This is my, my friend, like brother from another mother. So I, I got treated fair. I got treated fair. I mean, I know the other actors, you know, the, the main, you know, Snoop and Dre and them, they really got paid, paid. You know what I'm saying? But for me to play the role I did to get that kind of money, that was great for never acting, you know? You and Ice Cube had a, a little feud back in the day, right? Yeah. It wasn't no few. It, it was a misunderstanding, bro. You know, I don't like to talk about it because it's so old. I, I don't get it. I don't like to get into it because that's my brother, man. That's my, that's my family member, man. We, we, let me tell you like this. Uh, um, it was a misunderstanding on my, on my behalf. And now that it's over with and long over with, I, you know, I understand, I understand that I, I I did it the wrong way, you know, and me and him talk and we, like you got to remember, man, I, that, that's that's my boy, boy. I'm talking about NWA days. That's my guy sitting on the front porch. He playing with my son. You know, that's my friend. So it was just two two dudes that knew each other. And my misunderstanding came in between it because, you know, we were we were a certain rap group and they were West Side Connection. And it, it turned into some other shit. And I lost, I lost my identity as far as knowing that this man is my friend. I let that music shit come in between and hearsay, and it made me go a different direction with it. But we just, we had our little head bump and we moved on. It was the people that made the shit worse than what it is. Like, if I would, if me and him would have got into it and the situation would have happened last week, oh my god. Shit would be the biggest shit in the world because of social media. Wasn't no social right. media around back then. It was just Channel 11 News and it was the, the straight from the streets on there. So they was only talking about it in magazines, you know, the source and shit like that. But nah, that, that's my brother, man. I love him. 
He 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 know how I feel about him. I know how he feel about me. It's genuine love. It was just two two dudes that bumped heads, man. It wasn't like you know people make it like I did something bad to him. No, it was a fight. <laughs> my my nigga, he 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 stood his he stood ten toes with me, man. You know as he should. Yeah, as he should. Yeah, so when I, when, lo when lose a draw, you know a lot of people these days don't have the nuts to even get in on a one on one. Yeah, and this man is a. You know, a, a, a multi-millionaire. So that's what I try to tell people that he wouldn't even entertain another motherfucker. So that let you know that we knew each other to even get to where we can physically touch each other. So um, yeah, man, he he stood with his he stood ten toes down with me, man. I salute him for it. You know that you can't do nothing but respect a person for that. But yeah. I I got I got like I said in the book I got. You know, it's it's a good book, man. They just got to get the book and they can see more about it, man. For sure. I don't I don't want to spoil that. Um, now, you mentioned San Andreas. Um, and you were a voice actor for the gang members in the game? Yeah, I was for one of the gang members from Grove Street. Um, you know, hollering shit out. You know, when you're playing the game and you bump into a motherfucker and he say all this crazy shit to you. That's 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 what I was in the game. Somebody had a name for him. They said I was somebody. I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah. But I was a now, voice. CJ is your first cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he gets the lead role for San Andreas. How was he reacting to that? Like, um, back then, he see you gotta remember, man. Melee is an active. What was, I don't know if Melee's still banging, but Melee, Melee was an active hothead. I'm talking about a hothead with the bullshit, a heavy stepper. He just was, shit, you know, pay me my money. I'm going to do what I got to do, but I'm going to go back to the hood. And that's what he did. You know, he, he, he got his bread, did his little shit. He went back to who he was. You know what I'm saying? He never changed. He kept it the same. And that's what's so genuine about him is. He never acted like he did like something bigger than somebody or he tried to act like he was bigger than the next person. I mean, of course, he was he was taking his, you know, w what he did. Shit, he did one of the, if not the most, you know, popular game around. You know what I'm saying? I, I call it still the number one game and I'm in Grand Theft Auto 5. You feel what I'm saying? So um, but he kept it humble, man. Melee always stay humble. He get he get a little hot headed now. Don't get me wrong, cause he, he is what he is. You know, I love him. I don't care right or wrong. I'm I'm a ride with him. Facts. Yeah. Now I've seen you know recent clips on YouTube. It seems like his stance with Rockstar and your stance with Rockstar are totally different. He's pissed at Rockstar. You love Rockstar. They're like family to you. You know why do you feel like it's such a difference between y'all experiences? No, he he not like that, man. See, the the it, it, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. Let me tell you real quick. I just want to get real quick on that, man. Melee did what he did. It wasn't towards Rockstar. It was towards these fucking fans, man. See, sometimes you you know I, I'm learning myself, man. You can't read all the comments. You can't fall into what they say. So it was somebody calling him. A nigga, a, a punk, a buster, a fag. They was calling him out his name. And he just snapped. You know? And he went to where he went. He don't, he don't have no animosity like that towards Rockstar. Yeah, he might feel a, a light way, but not like how people taking it. He just took it out of contents. You know what I'm saying? Um, my, my stand on my side, um, you know, Rockstar is always solid with me. And I tried to, I did a, a live with him to, Yep. To say, come on, man. But you know, melee is what who he is, man. And I stand behind him. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna ride with him no matter what. You know, he feel his own way, but I don't think it's no hatred. He don't hate. Nah. He feel things. You know, might could have been a little different, but he also got to remember that it was a different time era. You know, it was a different time era. So you know, we chopped it up on live and. You seen it. He's staying where he's staying. And I respect it. And I love him no matter what. Were y'all both in the same gang growing up? Yeah, we was we wasn't in the, we were from the same gang, but it's different streets. I was okay. from um 118th Street. He was he was from 97th Street. But it was called East Coast Crips. 
that's crazy that y'all are really who y'all are in the game. Yeah. Like, all the shit in the game, y'all really ex- went through that shit in real life. Yeah. It's 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 crazy that they picked they pick me to be Franklin, and they picked him to be CJ. And I tell people that it's crazy that I'm, I'm always getting roles to where I can be myself. Like, Franklin. I can just pretty much... It's easy to fall into that character. Now, if I had to be a a character of um, a doctor or a lawyer or a squared up type of dude, then I got to find a way to act now. But see, with this, I don't have to act. I can just be me. And then the performance come out good. You know, so I consider myself not an actor. I consider myself a, a performer because I performed and brought Franklin to life, you know, which is me. I gave them me. You know what I mean? Did they know y'all were cousins? Yeah. Like in Yeah. So when you walked in for auditions, they knew that's CJ's cousin. Yeah, yeah. They knew our affiliation was was real, real tight. They knew that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they that's the idea of, you know, they might was sharp on it, you know. Well, I start sharp, man. The motherfuckers just sharp, man. That's why they so successful, shit. Straight up. Now, let's get back to they didn't tell you it was Grand Theft Auto yet. No. Nah. They didn't tell you you they thought it was Paradox, right? It was called Paradise. Okay, and one day, they wanted you to put on a suit, and you was like, fuck that shit. I'm, I'm out of here. I ain't doing this shit. Yeah, because you got to remember, when I went to go first film, I was fucking, <laughs> I was overweight. So I got to put on this goddamn scuba diving suit. Now I got this stomach, and I'm like, and, and it's all these people staring at you and shit. It's like 50 to 60 people standing around, cameras everywhere in the studio. And I was like, man, you know what? I can't act because I'm uncomfortable. Because I feel like people saying, look at his stomach. Look at his ass. You know, it's just... So So I kind of had talked it with... I quit, actually. I was like, man, fuck this stupid shit. And it was called Paradise then, so I was disrespect. I didn't give a fuck. I was like, man, I don't care about this shit, man. Let me take this off. And the director, man, such... I don't, I don't, I don't, he don't never like his name said, so I ain't gonna say it, but the director... He, he's, he's amazing, man. He came, talked to me. Man, we picked you for a reason, man. Trust me. We know you not there yet. This, this ain't easy to do. Because, see, I came on the set thinking that when you're saying doing a video game, Melee never told me. I don't know if he had to back then, but I don't think they were doing it back then. They might was. He never told me I was going to have to put a suit on with all these balls on me, this helmet and this fucking camera in your face with a bright ass light. I never knew that. I thought I was flying out to New York to go and read some papers, yeah. a whole bunch of papers with a headphone on. It out. Yeah. yeah, just lend my voice in a mic. So that's why I went there all cocky, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the motherfuckers like, put this suit on. Like, for what? Now you gotta act, you gotta everything you see Franklin do, you gotta do it. Everything y'all see Franklin did in the game when you running with him, punching with him, jumping, fighting, the sex scenes, I had to act all of that shit out, bro. The strip club Getting scenes, head, all that shit. I had to do everything. A lot of fucking <laughs> running, jumping, punching, busting the windows, everything. So that's why I said I'm a performer because I had to really do it. But once I got it, it started coming to me. Like I couldn't read when they give you the script. See, one, one different thing is, bro, when you when you acting in a movie and they give you a script, you're in your real clothes. You're sitting on a real couch. And you can run your lines and they say, eh, action. And you start your lines, you know, running them with somebody and yeah, 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 yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And you mess up. They say, cut. Pick it up from there. And then they go, and action. And you just pick it up from where you messed up at and keep flowing. Video game world, you got the suit on, all this shit on, chords coming from you everywhere, all kind of shit. All these people standing around you, and they set up a fake environment. It's you might be sitting on a on a on a crate. You could be sitting on a fucking crate, but if you look up on the big screen, you see your character sitting on the couch. So you gotta make believe. You gotta close your eyes and say, "I'm inside of this apartment, and I gotta make believe that it's a plant right there. It's a table right here." So I got to get comfortable like I'm in an apartment, but you actually in a big ass studio with just a box, some wood, some some scaffolds and all that shit. You feel what I'm saying? 
So you have to step out of the environment that you have to close your eyes and open them back up like you in this real world. So that's when I when I start learning to do that. And then you got to remember in, in the video game where also this is what I was getting at. If you got two pages full of script and you running them with with the Michael character and the Trevor character at the same time. And we doing our scene in the cut scene. We talking, blah, blah, blah. If one of us fuck up, we got to redo it from the top. So we got to keep going until it go all smooth. So if I got two pages of shit in my head and I'm trying to remember it and I, I get all the way to the end and I fuck up, I freeze up or something. Cut. Do it again from the top. And everybody be, come on, solo. God damn, we on take number 95. Yeah. So. What happened, well, how I changed that up, I started asking a lot of the actors because I work with a lot of great actors, man, on the set of shooting Grand Theft Auto. So I said, I started asking questions, you know, because I didn't know. Man, how do y'all be remembering all this shit? How do you lock this shit in your brain? So everybody was giving me ideas on how to do it, how to start being it. I found it, some clicked in me myself how to do it. I said, well, I used to write raps and I used to remember. Them. So I said, this is what I'm going to do. I took everything that they gave me and all them scripts, ton, thousands and thousands of pages, bro. Every time they gave me like 50 of them, I would take them and I would rewrite them. I would rewrite the script, put it in my own words. And instead, it might say motherfucker, you know, M-O-T-H-E-R, fucker. I say motherfucker. I cut all that motherfucker. I just motherfucker. So I start rewriting. And as I'm writing from my pen to my paper, it start locking in the brain. Yeah. That's what rappers do. Yep. So that's what helped me, bro. I start writing on my own, writing on my own, then highlight it, then read it one more time, then forget about it, then come back to it and see if I can remember it. Then I start getting on the set, bro. Like halfway through filming, maybe a, it took me a year to start really getting in the groove of it. That's when I found out I was working with Grand Theft Auto. Wow. Because they outed, they outed uh, the Michael character. And I, I said, we working on motherfucking Grand Theft Auto 5? Oh shit, nigga. So that's how you found out. Yeah, it took about a year. I was always thinking Paradise, a video game called Paradise. I'm telling you, when I tell you Rockstar is sharp, they sharp, man. They 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 leak things out. They, they they strategically do shit. They don't just do it like people keep bugging me about six, 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 six. Bro, I have just no knowledge about it. I don't. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you because it's called, it's called NDNA. So even if I was in it, you would never know until you see it, until I can talk about it. So just take it like that. People can say, oh, Franklin going to be in GTA 6 because he said he can't talk about it. You can take it however you want, but I don't know what's going on, to be honest. I, you know. How much freedom did you have? Like, could you say, because I know you had to rock roll chop, right? Could you have said Rockstar, I want a pit bull instead of a, of a rock roller? Did I, they give you that freedom? I probably could have. But at the time, I was just, and that's good you said that. That's that's a good, that's a fucking good question. Nobody ever asked me that. Right there, what you just asked me. After knowing what I know, I could have said that. I could have told the director, hey man. A Rottweiler is cool. We've had Rottweiler. We went through our era, but pit bulls is the hood shit. I want a pit. And I want his ass named Rocky, not Chop. You feel what I'm saying? Or Champ, or King, or Butch. Them are the common names that we give dogs. But at the time, I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. So the last thing I was thinking about was a, a dog. You feel me? Because I didn't know how far this dog was going to be in the game, how important this dog was going to be in the game. You don't know nothing, bro. You feel me? You don't know what they going to do with this shit. And then they brought a real dog on set. I'm talking about everything was real. Horses, everything you see in it. They brought a real fucking big Rottweiler, put him in a suit. And this mean motherfucker, I'm constantly like, man, you better get this motherfucker, man. It's growling and jumping at me. I'm like, hey, man. And I got to act scenes with him like, chop. Come here, child. Good boy. And this motherfucker really growling at me like, you better get your ass back. So <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the good dog was the dog they brought like a Labrador. He was a real good dog. And the trainer was with him. And I did the, uh, the Lassie scene with him. You say a man stuck in the tree? You know, that type of shit. And the dog barked back at you like he was talking to me. 
But that was a cool dog, man. But yeah, everything, man, you see in that game, it, it, they really brought it on the set, man. The strippers, it was some strippers came. That was a fun time, you know. <laughs> I mean, you got a tight ass suit on, and you trying to you trying to keep from getting hard and shit. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to stand up, so you sitting like this and shit. You know, so because if you stand up, your boner out here like this. So it was it, it was fun. It was Yo, cool, man. Yeah, you know. We see that GTA has made billions and billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sat back and been like, man, I should have got this, or I should have negotiated that, or royalties this, or royalties well, that? Well, I don't I don't talk about... When it comes to Rockstar, man, and they love me for this, I don't get into finances with nobody about it. But... Um, you... you, you that that's that's natural instincts with anybody and anything. But if anybody look at it and do real research is video game don't pay nobody royalties because SAG after don't let them do it. SAG after have to open up and say, hey, you guys have to now y'all have to start because when you really look at it, that is our likeness. My voice. My charisma, my everything. But, yeah, I, I think about it all the time. What if? What if? But you also look at it like... Opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Rockstar. And don't get me wrong, bro. I'm not hurting for nothing. Rockstar love they boy, man. That's facts. They love they boy solo, man. They do, bro. Yeah, they just gave you a new... Um didn't you just get it like a, a whole new thing for the game? The contract. And, a contract. And, yeah. and we got the, the game coming out again for uh, PlayStation 5. So, mm -hmm. come on, man. I mean, they, 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 they been good to me, man. They been good. I can speak for me. You know, the other people say what they want to say. But I know that they been good to, you know, they treat us right, man. They do. They, according to the, the rules of SAG and AFTRA. They treat us right. They do. You yeah. know? Now, you've also said that you you wish you would have been more active after the game as far as acting and, and things of that nature. Yeah, I wish I would have took advantage more of it. And everybody around knew my stance on that. The game came out, everybody, a few people, and everybody was saying, man, you need to... um." You need to get headshots. You need to get in more movies. You need to take your career a little further. But I was like, man, I don't give a fuck about this acting shit, man. I'm cool. And at the time, you know, when you're on camera, you have little blemishes and things that throw you off from wanting to be in front of a camera. Now, I'm in front of the camera a lot more now. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason why it held me back before. I got veneers. I got implants. I can get in front of the camera now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you was having a tooth missing over here and a messed up tooth over here. You got to remember when the camera's in your face and the people are looking at you, that's the first thing they see is your grill. That's the first thing they look at. And so I had this thing about that's why I wouldn't get on cameras. I, I didn't want to do no movies. I didn't want to do nothing, bro, because I got to go fix myself first. But at the same time of trying to fix myself, I'm raising a family. You know, I got a wife and I got kids and I got to put them through college and school. And it threw me completely off because I'm a genuine family man. I'm a real provider. I'm a real protector. You know, so they come first. So I was putting all of taking care of me off. And so, you know, my daughter graduated college. Um... By the grace of God, you know, I got called back in to work. And when I got the call to come back in to do some work, I said, let me go to this dentist and get these motherfuckers, this 56 bands to fix my shit. And they did it fast. When you paying that cash, the motherfuckers, they pull you past everybody. They ain't got to go through no uh, health care and all this Medicare and all that here. I'm paying y'all every time I come. How much you said? Eight bands, nine bands to do these two and to do those. There you go, cash. Let's go. Let's keep rolling. Here go my credit card. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's get it over with. And they did that. So now, this is my second go around. You know, I got, I got a second chance. You know, in life, you get second chances. 
and third chance. And this is my second chance. So I'm taking advantage of it now. You know, I got a, I got a, a agency. Um, it's, it's called EOA. They real big. Um, Nikki, Enoch, the producer. Um, I'm finna get headshots. Um, a photo shoot. I'm finna go now. I'm finna go. I'm finna, you finna start seeing a lot of me, bro. Trust me. And I know there's a lot of roles out there for me. You know, in the last eight, nine years since Grand Theft Auto came out, I see, I go to, a, I, I'm a movie um, enthusiast, man. You know, I like movies. And I see roles that could have been me. I, I could have run and read for that role. And me being the big video game star, I'm more than sure they would have gave me somewhat of a little shot at it. You feel me? Right. So this go around, I'm going to get mine. You're going to see me on somebody fucking screen soon, brother. Trust me. Trust me. That's what's up. Now, I got to ask this question. I know you can't answer it, but the fans, they're on my Twitter. They're begging me right now. Rockstar just said they're working on a new Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. I know you can't say anything. A lot of people are thinking it's Miami. They're going back to, you know, Vice City. What do you have? What, what are your thoughts on the next Grand Theft Auto? If, if What's the perfect grand, next Grand Theft Auto for, for Solo? Man, I, w- I think six, it should be, th- they should merge it, man. I think it should be, they should bring them back. They should bring, I don't care what age they are, whether they old now. They got to bring them back, man. I think they should just bring everybody back for this one little, like, reunion, man. Make one big, nice reunion, Grand Theft Auto, where you can get on a plane and, and go to different areas. You feel what I'm saying? That's what I think they should do. Like, you can fly from Los Santos to Liberty City, you know, to, to Vice City. You can go around and see what these old characters, the, when they was young, calculate the age. Uh, and make and catch up with them when they're in the older age, living the older life. You know, I don't know. Like they might can catch up with CJ. He he would be about 40, 40 something now. That's still an age where you want to know what the fuck he doing. What's going on? So that would be real nice. You know, I definitely want him to bring me back. See, bring <laughs> me back. If if I if I had my say so, bring me back. You know, and you didn't die in GTA Five at the end, right? I can't die in the game. You can't, you can't kill me. It's not an option. You got A, B, or C. Trevor, Michael, or nobody. Not Trevor, Michael, or Franklin. They, they got me to kill. If you go, remember, it's to pick me to kill one of the two. Who you gonna kill? Pick A, B, or don't kill nobody. So, I, you, I don't die. So, it could be. I could be. I don't know. I can't. And all the fans, and all the fans, they hitting you right now, trying to see what's up with six. Oh my God! Ever since the contract came out, man, they my dude. I didn't even know I had another area in my DMs. General the and request. some other yeah. shit. I'm Primary. Looking, yeah, I'm looking in it now, bro. I got so many people with check marks all the way down that I've missed for the last seven years. Let's do some business. Let's work. Let's make money. I done probably missed millions of dollars, bro. Millions. Because I never knew to go over there. All I ever did was just went to my regular DM. I never looked up and saw it said general and this other T-Pain, shit. T-Pain went through the same thing. The singer. Oh, for real? Yeah. He, he said so many people reached out to him for features. He just didn't know to look for it. Yeah. And DJ Pooh just going through it. I said, bro. Go up, look over here, and look. He was like, what the fuck? Man, look at this. What you call him? This DJ Red Alert. This, this, per, this person. It's crazy, bro, that I missed all of these opportunities, man. It's a young dude. He's a big, 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 big YouTuber, uh, YouTuber uh, influencer, man. He's a brother. I think he's from Atlanta. He's a skinny uh, dude. A little skinny dude. If you say his name, I know. Long story short, man, before he even blew. In 2013, after the game came out, I see, I, I scroll down and I see a DM. He said, man, I'm getting into this YouTube shit, man. I'm going to blow, I promise you, man. We got to do some content together, man. Me and you can do this. Contact me. And, and I said, damn, this dude is. I, I missed out on so many opportunities because I did not know. I never knew, bro. 
I never knew to just scroll over there, hit top request and see the people that's top, like got millions of followers. Like I can show in my phone right now. It's stuff that says thousands of days and shit ago, you know, and they all got 10 million views, 10 million followers, 6 million followers, 5 million followers. And they trying to do business with me. I, I, I never would knew, man. That's crazy. But that come from me being naive back then saying, I don't want to do that acting shit. I don't want no agent. I don't want no manager. I don't care nothing about that. Let me take care of my family. I don't regret it. Not one bit because I made sure my family was straight. I'm a family right. man, bro, because I came up in a dysfunctional family. So I didn't want my family to be dysfunctional. I want my, That's right. my, my family to be together. I want them to know they got a father, a structure, an idol. You know what I'm saying? I never, I never, they only finding out about my history through this stuff, through books and through interviews lately, but I never put it in their face. My wife never knew what I did for a long time, man. She, you know, cause I got back in the streets. I keep everything a secret, man. I try to stay. I'm like Kaizy Sosa, man. You know, I was, yeah, I'm in the studio, but I could be out pulling a pistol on somebody. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm a family man doing a, and a provider and protector. Well, your favorite Grand Theft Auto from favorite to least? Damn, that's a hard question, dog. Of course, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna you say, said San Andreas I'm say earlier. San Andreas, GTA Five, they right there with each other because I'm in it, of course. But and it being one of the, I think GTA Five is the biggest so far, the yeah, longest. Definitely, you know, it's the only game that making it to three. Gens, you know what I mean? Um, Vice City. Uh, damn. Four. You got G. Okay. And then you got uh, three. And three. Nah. Nah. Yeah, you got four and then three. I thought San Andreas was three, but they called it San Andreas. Nah, San Andreas. Oh, yeah, San you're Andreas. Right. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. three is Liberty City. Yeah, but the rest of the motherfuckers fall up under that, man. <laughs> okay. And why, why take eight? It's almost 10 years until this new game. It's like, why so long? Why is Rockstar taking so long? I, I, I don't know, brother, but let me tell you this. People ask me that, and I hate to sound so, so shitty, so fucked up. And and the fans and your followers and everything don't take this wrong, but by it taking so long, it gave me more work. So absolutely. So I have to, me being a natural human, a real human, I'm grateful it took a little longer. I'm grateful that Grand Theft Auto Five was still kicking ass over these last past seven, eight years, still making them a whole lot of fucking money. Now, the fans will ask why. My why is because y'all like the GTA 5 so much that you still were supporting and you was online buying all this shit and you kept the revenues coming in and you kept things going. And that's a great thing. So I can only imagine how six going to be, man. Like I said, rock star moves in silence. But you also got to remember, keep this in mind. COVID fucked up a lot of shit too. It took two years, two and a half years out of everything. I think COVID got me back in there. Like, you know, let's do something, to blah, blah, blah. You feel me? So I don't know. Like I said, man, I, I keep saying this. I don't know how Rockstar moved because I'm not in the technical part or in the financial part or any of that stuff. So I don't know what they thinking, their plans are, but they always got a plan. And trust me, the fans are going to be happy, man, because they always got a plan, man. And I always have to give, you know, people say, man, you know, uh, Solo, man, y'all did a good job, man. Without y'all, man, the game wouldn't have been this and wouldn't have been, nah. Yeah, we played a nice role in it, but you got to give the director, the programmers, all these people around us that create the game. We just lend our voice and our likeness. Now, they have to take it and go create it and make it build this map and build this and do that. So you got to give them people the credit, man. You definitely have to give Rockstar, you know, their programmers, their workers, 
There are people that's, you know, contractors and whatnot, man. You have to give them their credit, man. You have to. You can't. You can give us some because we performed and did our thing, but you have to give them. It's like a 50-50, man, you know. Yeah. If you could change one thing about GTA 5, what would it be? If I could change one thing about GTA 5, what would it be? I got it. I wish Franklin could have been just wild, just letting loose. <laughs> because he was like a punk in a sense. He was like a, not a punk. No, he was like a fucking punk, man. Because he really didn't get to just crack open. Yeah. Now, Lamar, crazy ass, he just got to be. Nigga, I don't give a fuck. Big dog, big nuts, just everything crazy. That's that Apache blood in me, nigga. Like Trevor, crazy as a motherfucker. Crazy. They just let him go, let Lamar go. Uh, they kept, and, 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 the, and the director kept saying, because I used to do it naturally, because it's just the natural instincts, like like the part when um when Trevor fell over the gate, and I was laughing, and he said, what the fuck you laughing at? And I had to, like, nothing, man, nothing. I thought it was funny. I'm sorry, but I apologize, man. Don't take it wrong. When we really first shot it, and he said, what the fuck you laughing at? I said, you motherfucker. What the fuck you think? Your dumb ass. Just, they was like, cut, cut. No. <laughs> you have to back. You have to let him be the monster. And you be like, OK, man. OK. I was like, man, I, man, I, I really want to quit this shit. If y'all ain't going to let me be me. It, but it's not about you. It's a story, bro. You coming from the hood. You getting out of the dumb shit. You meeting these two crazy motherfuckers. You learning the game. Lester teaching you the game. It's a reason for that. We, we, you, you had enough. Now you want to get out. And the only way you're going to get out is you got to take some shit. You got to take some shit. So to answer your question, if it was one thing they could have changed, let Franklin should have at least had a few motherfucking blow ups on Trevor, on uh, Michael, Lamar, definitely. Cause he got on my fucking nerves. If you play the game, he get, <laughs> Lamar get on your fucking nerves, man. That motherfucker Slink, man. He's Slink is just like his character in real life. He's a fucking nut, man. He's just. Are y'all related? Nah, we not related, man. But I met him when we when we uh went to auditions, and um, he was just a wild motherfucker, man. Motherfucker had a tank top on and it's fucking raining. And he was just a smoke a cigarette or some weed right in front of everybody. Don't give a fuck. Just he was just who he is, man. He's just wild, man. Obnoxious, you know. He's the he's the wild dude. I'm the calm dude. That's just how it is right. with us two, man. But I only thing I would change is if Franklin could have just been a, a tad bit more gangster. You feel me? But look at him now in the contract. Yeah. Nigga balling. That nigga balling. He balling out of fucking control. He calling shots. He, it's a, it was a reason for everything. So, like I said, sure. Rockstar Sharp, man. They move in a good way, a better direction than I thought they would. And I'm glad no, they brought me back, man. You know, I'm with Dr. Dre. Um, come on, man. Eminem, uh, uh, Snoop, Nipsey, Busta Rhymes, Kendrick mm -hmm. Lamar, all of that's in there, man. DJ Pooh, Jimmy Iovine in the, in, the, in the new online contract. Man, I'm glad they brought me back, man, for that right there, man. Now, I could say I really did it in the video game world, man. Now, now all they got to do is bring me back in six. So all the fans, man, y'all go out there and say, man, y'all got to bring Franklin back, man. 